Tuesday mornings on your Feel Good Breakfast show feels so good. Mm. Thank you for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Now let's talk about strokes. A stroke can happen to anyone at any time and anywhere. In mm. fact, one in four of us is at risk of a stroke in our lifetime. World Stroke Day is commemorated today and so to raise awareness of the symptoms of a stroke and how it can be prevented, mm. uh, we are here with uh, uh, Dr. Naeem uh, Ray, who's here to uh, actually create awareness because mm. it's something that we haven't, we don't speak much about. Yep. Um, we don't so know much about. Exactly, and that's what today is all about. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Bray. It's Thanks so good to have you here. Dr. Many people, many of us, we've heard of strokes, so we know someone who has experienced one, but we don't know what it is exactly. Uh, maybe let's start off with the basics. What happens to the body when someone has a stroke? Sure, so, so that's an excellent question. So um, maybe the best way to think about it is probably like a heart attack, uh, like a brain attack. Mm -hmm. So um, the brain obviously has many uh, important uh, functions, but a uh, blockage in an artery or a rupture in an artery will leave you with a stroke. So what does that mean physically? Mm. Well, if you think about it, who's the boss? The brain. Well said. <laughs> so to all the other specialists out there, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but fundamentally, the brain, if you want to think of it in a way, is the control module. And with a stroke, you block an artery in certain control modules mm. and then you lose function. Mm. So that might be weakness in the face, arm or leg. Yeah. Or it might be your speech center. So you no longer understand speech. Or it might be in terms of vision. So you may start uh, uh, seeing, having blurred vision or losing vision in either the left or the right side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really the, the way strokes present can be quite varied, yeah. but, but that's part of the reason I'm here to, to raise awareness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so that if someone is having a stroke, don't sit at home, Yeah. really. The thought should be, I think I'm having a stroke or someone else should then realize you're having a stroke yes. and then take you to the ER yeah. immediately. Uh, now, as a, as a consultant neurologist at Tigerberg Hospital, you yes. must encounter very many different kinds mm. yes. of strokes. Firstly, I didn't even know that they come in different types, types, uh, types of uh, um, strokes. L let's talk about yes. that. Yes, sure. So, so in terms of the two broad categories, there's an ischemic stroke. Basically, it's a blockage in an artery. Okay. Right. So remember, arteries they bring fresh blood, oxygenated blood, glucose, all the good things. And a as I mentioned a bit earlier, the brain's the boss. It's really a hog. It, it, it consumes of the bulk of the oxygen, the bulk of the um, uh, glucose mm -hmm. in the body. So when you have a blockage to an artery you lose function, mm. right? Because the, now the glucose and the oxygen cannot get to the brain. Yeah. Where it needs to be, yes. precisely. So either it's a blockage or you have a rupture of an aneurysm and then you have hemorrhage into the brain. And then you, you still don't supply the brain correctly. Yes. Um, and so, so strokes can be broadly split into ischemic or hemorrhagic. Mm. That's basically a blockage or rupture. Okay. Um, and then further on, we get many different types of strokes, but those are the, the main groups. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Naim Bray, I've definitely had family members or relatives who have had a stroke and didn't know that they had a yes. stroke. So what are some of the signs uh, that people must look out for that you know you're about to have a okay. stroke or that you've just had a stroke. Sure, so, so there's a very nice acronym called THINK FAST, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So FAST stands for face. Is your face looking a bit skew? Is your face drooping? Mm -hmm. Arm, so you get uh, your family member to put out their arms and then you check to see if it's drifting or if they're unable to lift it. Yeah. Okay. So there's arm and then there's S for speech. Is this speech dysarthric or, or garbled, yeah. you know, uh, or does their speech sound unintelligible? Does it sound as if uh, they're speaking a different language? Mm. I know it yeah. sounds bizarre. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And then T is for time. What is the time? And don't waste time. Mm. So think fast. Face, Face arm, arm, speech, speech. time. Okay, wonderful. So think stroke, think fast. Yeah, mm. all right. Uh, we really do appreciate you being here, Dr. Bray, to educate us and create win awareness on so, this uh, World us. Stroke Awareness Day. And when we come back, we'll be talking about uh, the fact that uh, having a stroke is preventable and exactly mm. how you can go about making those certain lifestyle changes that will hopefully help you to prevent one. So if you have any questions to ask, please throw them our way on our Expresso Morning Show SABC3 Facebook page. It's my feel-good breakfast show. 
Welcome back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. We're live on SABC3. It's a Tuesday. It's a medical Tuesday. And today we're talking about strokes because it is World Stroke Awareness Day. Did you know that a stroke to, can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time as well? One in four of us has a stroke, basically. Yeah, in our lifetime. In our lifetime. Very scary. And that is a conversation that we are having uh, with our guest this morning, Dr. Naeem Bray, who is, of course, a consultant neurologist at Tigerberg Hospital and a lecturer at Stellenbosch University, who is helping us unpack this very important, uh, is it a condition? This very important conversation that we are having this morning. Let's pick up the topic on talking about some of the myths that surround strokes as we further sure. try to understand them. There's a myth that if you get the smell of burning toast, that you are about to have mm. a stroke. Truth or myth? Oh, I want to go with myth. Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, where, where does this come from? Why no. do people make things up like this? Just to sort no, of further confuse so, us. Um, I'm not sure. I think sometimes there are false associations. Yes. So sometimes an event happens and you want to tie to, to, to something else. Mm. Oh, okay. Right? Uh, so, so that's definitely a myth. And another myth I think that we need to dispel is it's going to get better. Mm. So the large majority of patients I see and I ask them, why did they not come sooner? I thought it's going to get better. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that is a myth. Uh, when you are having a stroke, when a loved one is having a stroke, mm. even if things are improving a little bit, it's an absolute emergency and mm. you have to go to the emergency center as soon as possible. Mm. So, so the biggest myth I see is it's going to get better. Yeah. Mm. It might improve a bit, but you need to rush. And mm. as Dr. Bray did allude to earlier on, uh, think fast is yes. what you need to think about. And yeah. uh, F standing for the face, A for the arm, whether that arm can be kept up. You ask a family member to hold up both arms. If one of them drops slightly or they're unable to hold it, that's an indication. S yeah. uh, speech. alluding to speech, mm. whether their speech yeah. sounds unintelligible, sounds maybe garbled, yeah. and time, the fact that you don't have much mm. time. Yeah, Once it's, it's happened, there's no yeah. uh, kind of questioning of, Maybe we'll go tomorrow. Let's yeah. see if the symptoms get better. It is an emergency. Yes. It's a big warning when that happens. Yeah. Uh, but doctor, who's likely to get a stroke? Is it uh, older people more likely to, to get a stroke than sure. uh, more younger? Okay. So, so that is actually a fantastic question. So it's definitely older people. Mm -hmm. But having said that, we are seeing a change in society mm. in that younger and younger people are having diseases of lifestyle. So. There are more young, uh, uh, there are so many uh, young adults who are overweight, mm. who are hypertensive, who are diabetic. Mm. So really, we are seeing a number of younger strokes. I mean, uh, recently in our ward, we had 21-year-olds, a 26-year-old, and I think it was 32. Mm. Mm. Amongst older patients, for sure, yeah. and the bulk is certainly older patients, but there's a real change. And, and one of the drivers is um, the, the, the lifestyle changes that we are seeing, mm. as well as HIV might be a potential risk factor for stroke as well. Yeah, and we'll talk about further risk factors right now, you know, just to maybe reflect yes. on how serious this is, the yeah. fact that earlier on you were telling us that some 300 strokes occur every day in the country of yes. which 60 are fatal. Mm. People yes. die from strokes, mm. 60 of them every single day. And I think you need to add a uh, 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 further phrase to that, in South Africa, yes, just alone, yeah. just in South Africa, over 300 strokes a day, right? And if you think about it, really, that number one in four needs to sink in yeah. mm. because that's, and I'm going to uh, point around, but that could be one, two, three. Me, mm. one in four. Five percent of us. Mm. That's, a lot of that's a really, it's a big number. And and, and doctor, what, which common medical conditions can increase your chances of having a stroke? I know you mentioned uh -huh. HIV, for example, but yes. what are the other ones? So, so this gets to my favourite uh, topic when when speaking about stroke, mm. and that is how do we prevent stroke? Because at the end of this, I want everyone to realise strokes are an absolute emergency. Strokes are preventable and strokes are treatable. So in terms of how do we prevent strokes, hypertension is, is probably the biggest driver mm. and then lack of exercise. Mm. And, and lack of exercise is something I think we don't teach well as doctors, we don't education, e educate our patients very well. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've changed my tack and I've become slightly more aggressive, if you will, mm -hmm. in terms of, of telling people what we need to do. And so I've got a simple rule. I don't necessarily say you have to be in a certain heart rate and so on, but if you're not sweating, it's not exercise. Mm. Sure. And, and then also, the longer you sit on your buttocks, 
the bigger they get. <laughs> right, so it's just a sign that we all need to try and be more active. Yeah. It's, it's hard work, and that's why we don't necessarily always uh, educate our patients, because it's hard for doctors and for our patients. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So much for us to learn uh, from consultant neurologist and lecturer, Dr. Naim Bray, on this World Stroke Day. We have one more chat with him coming up where we'll further discuss uh, exactly what to do if somebody is experiencing a stroke right now in front of you. What are the steps to take as we further seek to discover and learn more about strokes on this World Stroke Day? It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show, Espresso, on this, this Tuesday, the 29th of October, World Stroke Day. We have uh, a con neur neurologist, a consultant and lecturer at Stellenbosch University, uh, Dr. Naeem Bray. We're talking about all the signs and symptoms of yeah. a stroke. We understand that more than 300 strokes take place do daily in South Africa. It's a lot. 60 of those are fatal. So, so much for us to be aware of and to truly understand. So thank you very much for helping to spread the awareness and yeah. educate sure. us as a public doctor. Sure. Thanks. Doctor, so, you know, when someone has a stroke and you're with them in the house, Yes. first of all, you often probably might not know that they're having a stroke unless you really have paid attention to these symptoms yes. we've spoken mm -hmm. about. What yeah. should you be doing? What do you do? What's the first thing that, as a reactive measure that you do when you see someone having sure. a stroke? That is a superb question and, and very important, right? So the first thing is make sure they're safe. So if they're standing and they're looking a bit wobbly or if they're sitting and they, they seem to be falling over, mm. maybe lie them down. Mm -hmm. mm. Then you call an ambulance. This is critical, right? Mm. If you don't have access to an ambulance or if it's un unreliable, try and get them to a hospital with a CT scanner. So a hospital, mm. avoid taking them to the GP or clinic, mm. straight to the hospital because mm. the treatments that are available are very time dependent. So you don't really have much options in terms of delaying things, seeing if it's getting better, as I said. So you, what you want to do is make sure they're safe, call an ambulance. So if if our viewers, in fact, can do something positive today, mm. they need to find out what is the number for their local ambulance service. Oh, mm. yes. Put it on their phone, put it on the fridge. Mm. An emergency is not the time to go, oh, where do I find this number? Yeah. You know, how do you prepare for an emergency? Not in the emergency. Mm. It's yeah. before. Mm. So, 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 so think true. about it. Put it on the fridge, put it on your phone. Mm. And the emergency. Okay, I'm going to ask this question, which might sound a bit silly, but for completeness sake, in terms of making a, a person suffering from a stroke safe, mm. yes. uh, i.e. watching out whether they're going to fall over, yeah. if they're standing or sitting, but mm. also you, you've seen it in movies before where they, they kind of seem to press the person's tongue down if something's happening. Do not. Thank you for asking that question. Mm. Do not do that. Even if someone is having a fit or a seizure, don't put anything in their mouth. Okay. Right? Yes. So, so that's a slightly uh, a different topic, but, but do not put things in their mouth to prevent them from biting or anything like yeah. that. Just okay. lie them on their left side, ideally, in that, and that's uh, during seizures. Yeah. Are there instances where the person having a stroke is not aware that they're having a stroke, but the person that's sitting with them may sure. see them presenting with signs of what could be a stroke? Exactly. So if someone, for example, has facial weakness, mm. you have no idea what what's happening to your face mm. you, you the first time you may recognize it is when you look into the mirror mm. or you may notice that you've got some dribbling so sometimes it's more obvious to the person next to them than the, the patient themselves mm. so so uh, when we were speaking about the the speech sometimes people have a speech deficit called aphasia mm -hmm. And they essentially they end up speaking nonsense, but they don't even realize that they, they're making up new words. Mm. To them, they, they're fine. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's talk about the most common treatment options, mm. and perhaps we can take it from that instance when you enter the emergency room, yes. what mm. you can expect to happen, and then sure. post that in terms of okay. treatment. No, no, uh, thanks for, for highlighting that. So in terms of what can be done, we'll check your, your glucose immediately because sometimes if your glucose is very low, it looks as if you're having a stroke. Okay. But it's not actually a stroke. So we'll check your glucose. If it's low, we'll give you some glucose and that helps things a lot. Mm -hmm. But in terms of clearing the... Uh, if you've got a clot, which is the mo most common type of stroke, that's about 80%. Mm. If you have a CT scan and it shows an obstruction or it looks normal, then we can give you a special drug, a chemical, that will be able to lyse the clot or cut the clot, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is 
pretty amazing if you think about it. So there's a clot sitting in your brain. Mm. We'll give you a drip and it'll go to the clot and lies the clot. Okay. Mm. And in fact, medical science has progressed so much that we can even in the right centers, mm -hmm. thread a catheter all the way from the groin mm -hmm. over here, all the way into the brain, find the clot, remove the clot so that you go uh, from walking in or being unable to walk, unable to speak, mm. to maybe after a few days walking out without assistance. Wow. 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 So that's just emphasizing mm. the need for that urgent reaction yeah. mm. when it happens. Yes. But to know that there is help as well and yeah. there are really some really sophisticated treatment options yes. that uh, medical professionals yeah. have and that they can help you with. But what can be done to reduce uh, the risk of a stroke? And I know that you mentioned sure. people getting active and getting fit, but um, there yes. must be other, other things. Other ways. Yes, definitely. So, so addressing your risk factors, so, so knowing what you are at risk for. So treating your hypertension, treating your diabetes, treating your cholesterol. Mm. We have to do these things. Stopping smoking. And another very important thing is a healthy diet. Mm. So for example, uh, having a diet rich in good uh, proteins such as fish, like yeah. Lucky Starfish, for example, um, good proteins, vegetable proteins, mm. fruits and vegetables. Mm. Right? So we neglect our diets. And, and even as a medical health practitioner, I indulge maybe a bit too much in the sweet things. Mm -hmm. I've got a sweet tooth, I, I cannot lie. <laughs> but, but we all have too much salt mm. and too much sugar. Yeah. Mm. Those are the enemy and we need to think of them as the enemy. Mm. Yeah. In fact, I, I recently, uh, there was a different interview and, and the specialist mentioned, how do you know what's a good food? Because in these days we have so much information, mm. don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this paleo, high fat, low carb, vice versa. Mm. And so we're not sure. Mm. But I think a simple rule is moderation. Mm. And the closer it looks to something that resembles a natural product, the better it is for you. Mm. Yeah. When you pick up a food and it has more than 20 ingredients, <laughs> Think again, how healthy is this for you? Yeah, mm. wow. So, so diet is a, a powerful role uh, in terms of your risk. And, and I think we all need to take ownership. Yes. You, you just, it's not that you are healthy just so. Mm -hmm. It's because of the work that you put mm. in. Yeah. You look after your body, it mm. looks after you. Oh, well summarized then. Yep. Added to that as well, the importance of having those annual medical checkups just to generally see what you are at risk of. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Bray, you are so popular right now. We're getting so many comments uh, yeah, that we gosh. are hoping to throw you away. All we're gonna friends, you, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to keep you for Thanks, another guys. segment to come. So please do stick with us. Yeah. And of course, you go ahead to our Expresso Morning Show SABC3 Facebook page and throw those questions and comments through to us on this World Stroke Day. It's my feel good Welcome back. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. Medical Tuesday has been yeah. a health jam-packed show where we've discovered so much, learned so much, not just about allergies. Graham had an allergy test performed live mm -hmm. on air, but we've also been speaking to Dr. Bray, uh, all the way from Stellenbosch University. He's also a consultant neurologist on this World Stroke Day, learning all about ischemic strokes and hemor is it hem hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic. Mm. hemorrhagic yeah. kinds of strokes. I, I, learning so my, my much. vocabulary is expanding. <laughs> it's expanding. It's beautiful too. stuff. It's insane. But also, you've piqued so much interest uh, on social media. Yeah. Everyone is so interested to learn and to know. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I saw a question from one of the viewers um, who wants to find out what the difference is between um, uh, uh, Bell's palsy and, of course, conventional yeah, stroke. We'll get and to that in a second. But Connect. this was a wonderful story that, we, mm. that we've got um, because uh, we, we've highlighted the, you know, the fact that urgent reaction to is a important. stroke yeah. is so, so important mm. and can result in uh, not just uh, survival, but better recovery as well. Yeah. So this mm. is what Colette had to say. Mm. Said, My husband suffered a cerebral stroke on the 25th of July, 2015 and recovered wonderfully. Time of the stroke, it happened at 2.30 a.m. Mm. Um, he had nausea and couldn't move or get up. We didn't think of a stroke, but luckily within an hour, he was in casualty. He only suffers vertigo 24 seven. Um, eye ailment has improved. His mm. left arm has shakes. Uh, speech is perfect. He's been medically boarded as he's a qualified electrician mm. but he can make food and coffee for himself to uh, small amounts of driving as well uh, what, what would you comment on this uh, especially with reference to the fact that when it comes to the time, time. aspect of it yes. you need to react I mean I think uh, that's a, that's a beautiful story because that highlights that no matter what time 
a stroke occurs, mm. it's always an emergency. Yeah. Mm. And, and you can see the positive outcomes. Yes. So he is largely able to do most things unaided. Mm. So w what do we want? We want to preserve life minimize disability, yes. simply. And, and we need the public to realize the seriousness, the gravity of strokes. Yeah. Mm. And, and so, I mean, this is a beautiful story of a well-educated patient and their family realizing something's not right, I need help. And then there's Excellent. chance of rehabilitation as well afterwards, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks, thanks for raising that up. I haven't mentioned that thus far, but really the rehab team is core to good outcomes in strokes. Wonderful. So our team, we're very fortunate at Tigerberg. We have speech therapists, physiotherapists, mm. occupational therapists, a good nursing setup, a dietitian, and sometimes even a psychologist. Yeah. Uh, over and above the doctors to, to embrace the patient, to, to optimize the outcome. So rehabil uh, rehabilitation is fundamental to good stroke outcomes. Dr. Bray, our thanks to you. You've been, You've been a really such a star. Thanks, thanks, thanks so, so much. much. We look forward to having much. you back yeah. and hopefully <laughs> you found that conversation very enlightening.